This is Performers Wanted. Welcome to the first episode of the show. Today we're going to be exploring the world of Karina Avila, a New York-based performer, most notably from Aladdin on tour and currently on tour with Moulin Rouge. Let's pop in to see how she's doing. And Karina, hi, how are you doing? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Doing pretty good. Good morning. Thank you for coming in. I appreciate it. Of course. I'm sorry it's so early for you. (laughs) No problem. Honestly, when I do these times, I often forget that people are in different time zones. So I have met with people from New York a few different times and have been like, okay, I've already set a time I need to (laughs) get here. Got to stick with it. I know. I get it. My, all my family's in California, so I completely understand. Uh, okay. Are you from here originally? I am, yeah. I grew up in, like, Rio Grande. It's near San Luis Obispo. It's a pretty, like, small towny, small towny area. Okay. Okay, nice. Nice. Well, it's good to meet you. It's actually an honor to meet you. Um, <laughs> we're we're going to talk about... We're going to talk about a lot of good stuff today. There's a lot of good stuff to to talk about, a lot of cool stuff. Um, we'll get to it. People who are listening and, and who know who you are probably are excited to hear about what we're going to talk about. Yeah, we're going to talk about Aladdin. We're going to talk about Moulin Rouge. Of course, we have to. Um, we're going to get to it. We're going to get to it, but uh, we're going to take it back. So um, anyone who doesn't know who you are, anyone who lives under a rock, maybe, uh <laughs> Uh, why don't you introduce yourself and say a little bit about yourself if you could. Sure. Um, my name is Karina Avila. I am a New York based performer. I started mainly as a dancer, but now I work mostly in musical theater. Um, I grew up in California, so my first kind of venture into performing was very commercial based dancing. I did some music videos. I did some industrials. Um, and then when I was graduated high school, I moved out to New York. I was actually going to be a regular person and I moved out here with the intentions of just being a muggle, but I, I couldn't stay away. And so I've ended up, uh, really diving into musical theater and it's absolutely what I love. And I'm so lucky to get to do it every day. That's amazing that I didn't know that. It, yeah, you you came out just to just to live life. You came out just to <laughs> absolutely, yeah. Actually, um, I auditioned for a lot of dance programs for uh, to go to college for dance, um, both in New York and in California, and I did not get into any of them. Um, so that was kind of it for me. I was going to give up and just. I I majored in women's gender and sexuality studies for my undergrad, and I had the intentions of going to law school after and becoming a lawyer and saving the world, but, um, you know, I took class here still during college, and one thing led to another, and I just couldn't, couldn't stop performing. Wow. Wow. That's, I mean... That's something that you really don't hear about that often. Like, oh, I came to New York because I wanted to be a star. <laughs> like, no, I came to New York because I wanted to be normal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyone who's been in New York knows that New York is not a normal city. Uh, Absolutely not, no. <laughs> it's not a, a normal city at all. I just came from there a couple months ago, and I'm like, ah, ah. I know. If it's not for you, it is not for you. Most My brother, he is not a huge fan anytime he comes out here he's like i don't understand why you put up with this but yes i love it I, my mom can't stand it and my sister lived out there for a while because she went to amda and then lived oh, out there nice. for a while professionally so then anytime my mom would visit you know which she's gonna visit but she's just like i don't like new york <laughs> uh, but my sister's like complete like city girl like oh yeah i want to go back to new york because she's out here now like raising her yeah she's like i want to go back to new york people are real are you are you in la i'm in los angeles yes okay cool yeah very different still a big city but very different vibe very very different it's it's you think you're moving fast until you go out there um yeah so uh so you i i think i saw you were you're part of clear talent group i am yes 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 and you joined as a dancer is that what you joined as i did yeah um they are my second agent I've ever had. I had an agent when I was in high school um, that 
MTA, Movement Talent Agency. They're based in LA. They've recently opened up in New York. Um, and I was signed with them in their um, children and teens department back in the day uh, as a dancer. And then when I moved out here, I signed with Clear as a dancer. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Got a lot of friends who are part of Clear and, you know, they have pretty good things to say. About yeah. I think it's funny, like depending on where you are in your career is very it's like that's what depends on whether or not you like your agent. Uh, people ask all the time and it's always like this i i do really like them though they have been they, you know they stood behind me when i had no credits and they really pushed for me to be in the room um back when i hadn't really proved myself yet and i will always be thankful to them for that that's amazing that is amazing so um all right so were you a dancer first like a dancer primarily when you first started joining anything performing arts Absolutely. Um, so I started dancing probably like every other kid. You know, my mom put it at, put me in the like ma mommy and me baby classes when I was like three years old. And I actually, I didn't fall in love right away. I did it because she, she put me in it and then I would, you know, go do soccer, basketball, all the things. And I think I really fell in love probably in like middle school. That's when I decided I wanted to dance. You know, I went to my mom and was like, I want to I want to join the competition team. And so I joined the competition team. And I know there's lots of feelings about dance competitions in the performing arts world, but it was the best decision I could have ever made and my, my parents could have ever made for me. It is what absolutely made me fall in love with performing. And I am forever, forever thankful for having the opportunity. It was... It's some of the best years of my life still. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, same thing, competitive dancer for about 25 years. So like. It, oh, so you it, get it. Oh, I, I definitely, I definitely get it. You know, like my mom was having me and my sister like compete because she, she danced before and then we kind of took it in different ways. My sister had a company in New York and then mm -hmm. I was directing a company and kind of out here and yeah, it was a, it's a whirlwind. I've been doing it for so long that I don't particularly compete anymore, but I, it's really just after a, a while, you, you do get spent on it, but man, does it train you. Oh my gosh, yeah. And the I feel like it gives you this fire and this grit that when you like go into these audition rooms, it really puts you... I don't want to say on another level because, you know, we're all just in competition with ourselves. And I really believe the jobs that you're supposed to get are going to find you. Exactly. But I think it really puts you in a great position once you uh, start auditioning professionally. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Because, like, even so for after a while when I was competing long enough, because at first when I was competing, I was just like I was excited to be there. Mm -hmm. Just to be there. But after a while, once I started, like, competing like when they like crossed over into like adulthood and i was still kind of like competing i was like looking at everyone like i'm just like who am i gonna take out <laughs> <laughs> and then i started like coaching the teams and it was like even more so that because now i'm like writing down notes and was like yeah you know, gotta strategize <laughs> mm -hmm, yeah so i walk into an audition room just like okay what are my chances <laughs> like you <said. laughs> Really, it kind of like stays with me. I guess that's why I kind of like backed off of it a little bit, but I'll probably be back into it because it's just something that's been a part it, of my life for so long. Yeah, and it absolutely does stay with you. And I think my first few years in New York um, taking class and auditioning, it was kind of something I had to learn how to take the good and leave the bad because I was really competitive. And I started kind of seeing how that maybe wasn't working out for me. And so it took a lot of, and it still takes a lot of, uh, you know, mental power to kind of remind yourself, like, you just have to do the best you can do and leave everything else on the dance floor and just leave it out of your mind once you exit, like, the audition room. But I do think it was, it was an amazing experience for me. And I'm, I would not be performing today, I don't think, if I hadn't been a, a comp kid. Yeah, because those, those comp hours, like, when you're, like, rehearsing like those are probably like the most hurt that you are before you're professional <laughs> it's like oh yeah the repetition is something that like 
some people don't understand it's crazy you know and you know having to have perfect line after perfect line you know just like you know it was down to i was seeing some judges who were just noticing that like a pinky was out of place <laughs> i mean yeah but that really, that builds your attention to detail, it builds your focus, it builds your work ethic, and that's all, you know, you need those things once you start working professionally. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you were you were competing for a while, you mm-hmm. were signed as a, as a teenager, um, and then you go to New York so you can do something else and just be, you know, just amongst amongst the living, amongst the normals. That's what yeah, I say you you go out there, which is so interesting. How did you end up jumping back into performing arts after making the decision that you were going to do something else? Um, I never stopped taking class once I moved out here. You know, luckily I chose a city that has incredible training. I don't want to talk. Can I say bad words on here? Go ahead. I don't want to talk shit about LA. I love LA. You know, I have a very special connection. I feel like I'm from there. I've trained there. But the training in New York, I think it's the best training in the world, especially for for technical dancers. Street, hip hop, sure. LA can have it. But I always took class. You know, we have Broadway Dance Center here. We have steps. Um, Mm -hmm. So I, I just kept training, you know, here and there whenever I could. And I remember... I saw a flyer for a class that was going to have an agency come and scout. Mm -hmm. And so being from LA, I was like, I'm going to go. So I put on like leather leggings, this like little red bra top. I had like jewelry and like, and I wore stilettos. Little (laughs) did I know this was a musical theater agency because I had never taken a musical theater class in my life at this point. So I, I walk in and I look like I'm straight out of a music video and all the other girls are wearing like little Lululemon skirts. They looked cute. They were great. They looked great. But they're wearing Lululemon skirts and like a leotard and Laducas. I had never even like seen a Laduca. I didn't own Laducas at that point. So I was like, <laughs> definitely felt like I was sticking out like a sore thumb. But I did my best. I like took off all my jewelry and like took off my like little leather jacket. And I was like, okay. And so I did the class. I did the best that I could. And um, it was actually the Mine Agency, uh, which is a really boutique agency here in New York that represents a lot of mostly singer um, performers. And so they had a lot of interest in me and they kept me after and I talked to them and then they asked me to come to a singing night. I did not sing. So (laughs) I like tried to prep. Yeah, no, at this point, I did not sing pretty much at all. I tried to prep. I found, like, Big Spender, and I was, like, singing it for my roommates. And I was, like, trying to to feel like if I could do it or not. I wasn't sure. They were like, go do it. You sound great. It's fine. And I panicked the day of, and I emailed them, and I said, this is horrible. I told them I broke my ankle that morning, and I could no longer come. <laughs> Complete lie. I do not condone this. I should have just been honest. Um, I don't know why I didn't just tell them like I don't sing, but so that happened, and that's when I really, really realized like I want this still. I I can't give up. I don't want to give up. Maybe I need to learn to sing, but I definitely still just want to give it a shot. And so at that point, I started taking vocal lessons, which is a whole other journey for me. Um, obviously did not sign with the mine because I broke my ankle. You broke your ankle so, <laughs> um, you you so I, <laughs> so I, I started taking vocal lessons. I kept training. I ended up taking a little break from school. I took a semester off to do the pro sem professional semester at Broadway dance center. Mm-hmm. That's when my training really took off. They have you in like 12 classes a week. It's wild. And then at the end of that is when I signed with Clear. Um, So that's kind of how I transitioned from just being a regular person to really trying to do it. Okay. I mean, I I dig it. I mean, (laughs) the broken bone story is wild. I know. It's horrible. (laughs) This is what this podcast is about, guys. Uh, We don't know what's going to happen. 
but it's wild. But I guess my next question, you know, is that's that is the cool thing. Like, how does it like feel? Because you are a dancer. You came out and you were training. And yes, New York is has like the best training in the world. You know, New York is where you train. Um, and you end up in the room, musical theater company, you know, and yeah, because I mean, you're going in there like how agencies normally do where you come in and you're just like making sure that you pop where like everyone's got like character shoes on um but now you were performing but you were performing on musical theater stages now Mm -hmm. and it's like how's that how does that feel i know like you know because the the dancer idea like especially coming from la or even new york you know you're thinking about like oh i'm gonna i'm gonna tour with like Rihanna I'm gonna tour with our Grande that's what I'm gonna do and you are touring I am touring a lot but not the way I thought I would yeah um it is a big it was a big change I guess it kind of happened slowly and I was lucky enough as a kid I was exposed to a lot of theater my mom loves musical theater so we would see at our local um, theater all the time. We'd go to LA and see it, um, see stuff at the Pantages, which I've now been so lucky to have performed in. Like, I want to cry just thinking about that. Um, but I just never put it together as a kid that I could like make a living doing musical theater. Um, but after that initial audition where I had no character shoes, I took a couple of musical theater classes and I just absolutely fell in love. I love. So when I was in high school, my very first job was a music video for a Latin artist that I never really popped off. And it happens. (laughs) It happens. What can you do? (laughs) Uh, But I had had an amazing time. I loved doing the on-camera work, but it, you know, it was a male artist and the music video was very centered around just kind of the girls being caught. And we danced and we were talented. We were all incredibly talented. Um, but I remember looking back and kind of thinking like, why have I trained so hard if, if I'm just kind of going to be pretty for most of my jobs? Um, and I think musical theater gave me a way to dance professionally and use a lot more technique and use a lot more and I'm not saying all LA or all commercial jobs are like that but it was just kind of a, a an awakening of saying like oh right. this is probably what a lot of jobs would be like in LA and I love that I love shaking my ass like don't get me wrong <laughs> But I just wanted the opportunity to also do something else. And I think that's why I took to musical theater mm-hmm. so much. And I love storytelling. I love telling a story. So I really found my niche with musical theater. And I'm, I'm so happy that I did. Mm. I'm going to I'm gonna bring this up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring this up again because you talked about it. I think I saw a post of it and I was going to bring it up anyway. So you've touched the Pantages stage. I have, I have. It's a fantastic stage. And I, yeah. I know you've been, I know you've seen, I know you were little in the Pantages. You were watching it and now you've touched the stage. I mean, I know it's unbelievable. It's absolutely unbelievable. That's incredible. Like, that's such a, a full circle, like, moment you like watching mm-hmm. as a kid. And I'm going to yeah. bring it up. And this is, this is this is a little deep, but I do want to, I, I ask this question kind of a lot. So, little Karina, uh, don't make me cry. <laughs> little Karina is like watching you on the stage. What is she thinking? Like, what is she thinking right now? Like, when she like, obviously she can't imagine like like being on there at the point, but like she sees you. Like, what is what is that little girl thinking about? I think she's probably just shocked. I mean, I always had drive. Once I fell in love with dance, like, 
I was I was a hard worker, but I I wasn't the most technical. I never had the best feet. I never had the best lines. And you know, I did solos at competition and stuff, but I never won. I I was happy with my performances, but I was never, you know, triple high platinum whatever. So I think she would just be shocked and so excited and so happy. Um, yeah, I mean, I saw my first show there. I think I was probably like three years old and my mom took me to see Lion King. Mm. And so, yeah, I think it would just be kind of inconceivable to, to a young me that I would get to do it. Mm. But here I am. Well, here you are, and I guarantee that little girl thinks you're the coolest person in the world. I hope so. I think I think I'm pretty cool. Depends on the day, but you know, I I do think I'm incredibly lucky. Well, definitely. That I mean, a lot of folks don't uh, don't always recognize when they see like the success. Like I know when they like they see the casting announcements, they're just like, "Oh, she's killing." They probably don't see the in between. Of every other yeah. thing you're trying to do before you actually get that casting. Absolutely. And even like, even now, I don't consider myself like a success yet. I've had some success. Like, I'm really lucky to get to do incredible work. But, you know, I hate to get hung up on it, but like, I haven't been on Broadway yet, you know? And like, that's, it's, a goal. it's hard to appreciate the steps you've taken and the goals you've hit right. when you haven't hit all of them yet. And it's, I try to remind myself to be like, even just like having an agent in New York, you know, 10 years ago, that's the big goal. That's all you want. And so it's, and you got to remember that as you hit these other goals, don't just look forward, look back at what you've done and where you're at. Otherwise you'll go crazy. Yeah. So. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's, it's a, it is very humbling when you also go into something, you go into an audition or something like that in between those jobs and like you hear, not this time, you know, like. Oh my God. Yeah. I went to an audition on Monday, got cut immediately. (laughs) (laughs) And it wasn't even like I messed up, got cut. Like I thought I killed it. And they were just like, nope, absolutely not. But immediately, no. That's crazy. You know, and like. This is, you know, this is just in preparation too. This is the, you know, to help the, you know, the other little Karinas that are like here now, you know, um, because yeah, it is rough, but like, you know, let's, you know, let's not get discouraged. It's not to discourage at all because like, even yeah. though like we're seeing these great things that you've gotten to do, which you, you know, very fortunate to do as a performer and also, you know, deserving as well, cause you, you are also very talented, but there's like peaks and valleys you know the peaks and valleys definitely so it's not all that glitz you just said you you had an audition you still have to audition they're not just you do you still have to audition i do everybody does well most everybody most everyone most everyone does like there's there's a, a choice few who don't but most everyone does absolutely uh, and you know it's a yeah it's a lot of no's it is it is a lot of no's and then you get a really good yes yeah and luckily with musical theater you get a yes and hopefully if it's a long-running show you'll have a job for you know a year two years um that's another thing i found a little bit more frustrating about like more la work and more commercial work is you get a yes and you have a job for maybe like two weeks Mm because it's it's shooting it's a a commercial or a music video or something like that. Luckily here, you know, I do still have to audition, but in the last, you know, two and a half years, I've been to like maybe three or four just because once I got Aladdin, I was on Aladdin for almost a year and a half. And I had actually already auditioned for Moulin Rouge prior to leaving for Aladdin. So then I just had to come back and do, they do a boot camp. I don't know if you are familiar with that. Mm-hmm which is more like a work session where you go in and you learn the show for a week. So it feels much less like an audition. Mm -hmm. And then that's when I booked the show. So I don't know. I don't want to say luckily because I don't mind auditioning, but in the past few years, auditions have, I haven't had to do as many 
and I've still had a lot of work, which has been great. Right. Um, yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah, that's pretty consistent because a lot of folks will go and do something, do a job for a year and a half, two years, come back and be like, okay, what's, what's next? <laughs> Yeah. This is great. Go back to the real world. Got to go back to retail. Um, but, you know, it, it's uh, it's very interesting that they are like overlap. So you pretty much, you jumped from Aladdin straight to Moulin Rouge, huh? Um, not straight. I did the boot camp while I was still on tour. I took a, a week of vacation from Aladdin to come and do the boot camp. Um, and I pretty quickly after that, got an offer. I was incredibly lucky, but I actually couldn't take it. I was still under contract with Disney. So, and they, there wasn't enough warning. We had to have four weeks notice and it was only like two weeks before they needed me to start. So I had to say no, but that gave me a little bit of confidence. I stayed with Aladdin for another, I think like six months, but it gave me the confidence that when I was ready to leave Aladdin, to leave knowing that I probably had something coming up pretty soon. Because when I had to say no, they said, that's fine. We totally understand. You're on the top of our list. And when we have another spot available that you're great for, you will absolutely be um, at the top of our call list, which was, it's so nice to leave a job with that kind of confidence that another one is coming down the pipe. But even with that, I was unemployed for, I think like three months in between Aladdin and Moulin Rouge. And of course you go to worst case scenario and you leave a job and you think, oh my God, I'm never going to work again. I'm never going to be on stage again. All the things. But luckily it worked out. Um, I got to start with them. I left Aladdin in October and I got to start rehearsals with Moulin Rouge um, just after the new year so in January. Okay. All right. Awesome. And you are still with Moulin Rouge or have you ended? I'm I'm still with Moulin Rouge. So my position is called a universal vacation swing. So I cover vacations, injuries, whatever, medical leaves, if somebody, you know, had a baby, anything like that, I would go out and cover that. So I started in January. They ended up needing me for a pretty solid chunk of time. So I just left that it ring. I left at the end of May and I am actually, I'm going back out on Monday to cover. Yeah. So right now it'll be more like two or three weeks out there with the tour, a couple of weeks home and I'll kind of bop back and forth, which is really nice because I did not have the intentions of joining another tour. Um, <laughs> in this way, I get to kind of keep my life in New York and I also get to still perform and do all the things that I love. Amazing, that's it amazing because I know that tour life is crazy. It is. It is absolutely a whole other world, but it's fun too. You get to see parts of the country that you never thought you would, and you know you see the good and the bad. There's tons of places that I thought I would hate, and I ended up loving. So it was. It's a great, great experience. Right now, I want to just want to like preface. You know, for anyone like uh, listening, because um, you you mentioned the word swing again, and <laughs> you know, and we hear this word a lot, and even on this show, we've heard the word a few times. I guess on you have been some form of swing, um, and being a swing is crazy. Like it's being a swing is crazy. And it's insane. It is the hardest thing I have ever done in my life. But it's also one of the most rewarding. Like, I don't, if people don't know what that is, I essentially, when you see a musical, there'll be probably like six, seven, eight women in the ensemble that are like dance heavy roles or, you know, just not principals. And I know all of them, or I'm supposed to know all of them. And at any notice, yeah, <laughs> uh, at any time, you know, they can throw you on. I've seen people thrown on in the middle of the show uh, at half hour. Like, I think the closest I've ever had to, like, my notice was like an hour before curtain. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's, it's hard. 
but it's really fun. It's very like uh, intellectually stimulating. Which yeah, with a lot of homework. Great. A lot of homework. I after this this interview, I'm about to get off and start going over all my stuff. Um, I'm about to start going over all my stuff so that when I get there on Monday, I can be ready to go on for anyone. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, so let's get into it. I know, you know, folks, we wanted to hear you have worked with Disney. You work with Disney. Disney's all our childhoods. And I mean, you just, you just said you went to the Pantages and you saw Lion King when you were little. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Aladdin is from that same, like, uh, Disney Renaissance era in which they Mm -hmm. completely turned everything around. And now this is what we think of when we think of this story. Um, Disney is primarily made from things that are in the public domain or things that they got rights to, other stories. But their versions of them are what we think of when we think of these stories. Uh, Mm -hmm. So, Aladdin, (laughs) the... uh, the Disney Corner of Broadway. How, okay, the process. How how? I mean, I'm assuming since you you are signed that you know you you got word that they were like holding auditions. But what was that process like to get on that? Show? Oh my gosh, we got to go way back in time to talk about that because Aladdin was one of my very first. I moved to New York. I started seriously auditioning probably in like 2018 and Aladdin was one of the first ones. Like I remember it was one of my first big Broadway national tour auditions that I did pretty well at and they kept me and had me sing and tap and all the things and I didn't get it. And they called me on again probably like a year and a half later and I did all the singing, the tapping, whatever, didn't get it. And so I, I had been in probably three times before I went in, um, in 20, it was just after the pandemic. So maybe like 2022, 2023, I went in for this, for this national tour. And that's when it finally, finally happened for me. But I, it was a very long process. I had been in many, many times and I knew they liked me, but I, I, I think it was probably my voice that kept me from booking it the previous times. Mm -hmm. Um, but luckily, with this this second tour that they put out, it worked out. And I actually had a friend. I don't want to say friend. A, a person I look up to in the industry um, who was running the auditions. I had taken his class. And he, I could tell he was kind of rooting for me. And he, I think, probably put in a good word. And, you know, I made it through the first dance cut. And then they had me sing, and I sang, (laughs) I sang a song that they did not love. And so (laughs) they kind of asked me, what else do you have? And I, we, I went to the, to the pianist and we went through my book together and we found something else, which is not, it wasn't right for Aladdin. So when you go in for musical theater auditions, you're supposed to sing a song that like is in the genre, it's in the world of the show. Right. Um, so I sang a contemporary musical theater song because it's a contemporary musical, but they didn't love it. So we went through my book and we found my, my like old school musical theater song and I sang that for them and I, and it was fine. They liked it. They called me back the next day. We tapped. And then I think like two or three weeks later, they called me back again for the entire team. And that was, you know, Casey Nicola who had done every single Broadway show ever, um, there was probably like 20 people sitting in the room and I danced and I killed it. You know, I love dancing. I can perform the crap out of dance. And then I went in to sing and I was so nervous because I knew it was the last day. I knew I was so close. And anyone who knows singing technique, being nervous does not lend itself well to singing. You know, you clam up, you get tight. And that's absolutely the opposite that you want to be. So I went in and I tried to relax and I just, I started my song and out of the corner of my eye, I could just see my friend. I'll call him my friend because I think he really pushed for me. I could just see him like nodding his head, like, yes, just get through the song. Like it's going to be okay. And so I just kept telling myself, like, I just have to get through the song. It just has to come out and it has to sound okay. It doesn't even have to sound great. It just has to sound okay. And so 
I did. It sounded, I guess, okay, because I I did book it. I did leave the room thinking like it's not gonna happen. It's not it's not the time. I don't think I sang well enough. But luckily, a couple of weeks later, it was actually kind of a while later, um, I got a call and I had booked it. I was shocked and so excited and so happy. But yeah, I was it was great. That's right. Can we just talk about like this we we have to bring this back because we have to talk about how you sang this song. You're nervous to sing the song, but you sang in front of all these people, like legends, these, you know, and to get into such an iconic show when first time you were asked to do a song, you said that you would I broke my ankle. You broke your ankle and didn't go to it because you were too nervous to sing and turn around you're still nervous but oh, yeah you actually but, go and do it and you book something that you can't write that that's a that's that's a movie right there <laughs> and it, i mean it's the story of a lot of dancers a lot of dancers we want it so badly because we love dance so much and we love performing so much but singing isn't something that a lot of you know really strong dancers do growing up um, especially ones that are from California because they don't realize that musical theater is such a great opportunity for us. Right. But, you know, I worked really hard. I still work really hard. Like, my voice is something I still... I, you know, I was back in the city for two weeks on this little break from Moulin Rouge, and I, I each week I had a voice lesson. I've been practicing. Like, it's just... Musical theater is such a... You know, you have to be able to do everything. You have to be a triple threat to work consistently. And you have to work twice as hard on the on the aspects that you are, you know, as naturally gifted at, which I would say I am not a naturally gifted singer. Um, but I work really hard and my voice has come a long way and I am really proud of that. So it is kind of a full circle moment. I actually hadn't really thought about that connection of the first time maybe I was to sing lying my way out of it. And now um, get to do it yeah. every day on stage. So. Yeah. It's just, an, it's just like, it's just so like full circle. It would be one thing if you just like, just said you can't do it or something like that. But it's just the thing you decided to say is so wild <laughs> that it's like when you come back around and see what you, where you're at now, like I have to, I have to commit, I have to commend it. I have to commend it. Cause that, that's a brilliant story. I didn't, I didn't. Thank you. I couldn't imagine. Um, so, yeah, I mean, yeah, how was it working with the Disney machine? Like, how how, how was that for you? Um, in so many ways, it was absolutely incredible. It was also the hardest year and a half of my life, I would say. Um, I really enjoyed working for Disney. They are a machine and they are a very corporate entity in the world of musical theater, which is a little bit di different. You know, up until that point, I had only done regional contracts, which are very like, looking back now, it's like summer camp compared to mm -hmm. to Disney. But they took care of us. They, they treated us well on the road. And I mean, it's Aladdin. Like, it's such a fun show to do. And especially throughout the country, knowing that like, my first show was a Disney show and it I mean it didn't bite me with the bug like so many other kids did just because my journey to doing musical theater was a little bit different but I did fall in love with musicals I fall I fell in love with seeing them and to kind of see all the kids out there dressed up as as Jasmine or dressed up as Aladdin like those are memories that I will hold in my heart forever it was I loved doing a kid's show and I don't want to call Aladdin a kid's show because it's not. It's an incredible show on its own. Right. I, it's one of my suggestions when people come to New York um, just because it's such a quintessential piece of Broadway right now. But getting to see kids' faces every night was worth it all. It was worth never having a day off. It was worth you know flying every single Monday, packing up all my stuff every week. Um, yeah, it was 
truly incredible. And especially now as a swing where I don't get to go on stage every night, mm-hmm. the having that on stage track on in Aladdin, I wasn't I wasn't on stage track, so I did it, you know, eight mm-hmm. times a week. Wow. You get, you know, you can't trade that for anything. It's it's incredible. Yeah. My gosh. Like that that sounds that sounds nuts. And like, you know, you're doing musical theater now wasn't the initial goal. Your mom loves musical theater. Like she you know, is she like is she like over the moon? Like Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Both of my parents are. My my parents have been so supportive um of me and my goals. And even when I wasn't even when I was booking like regional stuff, they were there. They to them it, it was Broadway. It was they I'm very, very, very lucky, but um I don't even know how many times my mom came to see Aladdin, but she at least five or six different cities. She would kind of follow us around and She made it work. She made it work. She would come and see it like two nights in a row. She would see the matinee and the evening. Um my dad did too. My mom she's kind of a sucker for musical theater. She loves it. So right. um it was it's it's so nice and you hear so many stories about kids who who maybe don't have the most supportive parents um and i'm so lucky that my parents are behind me 100 percent. well that yeah that is something that you don't hear all the time and it's like it's it's sad to you know it's and then it's it's also sad but i get it like i get it i remember (laughs) My dad sat me down and I was probably I was probably like a sophomore in high school and I was when I was first kind of realizing like I love dancing and I want to do this forever. And he sat me down and he said, You know, Karina, the chances of making it as a professional dancer are kind of the same as making it as a professional athlete. Not very many people do. And I don't think he said that necessarily to discourage me, but more of just like a reality check of like if you're gonna do this you're gonna have to work harder than anyone else not you know we all work hard but like in your head you have to think i have to work twice as hard as everybody else because it's it's hard and i totally get why some parents don't necessarily want their kid to go into it Mm -hmm. but luckily my parents were realistic they're still realistic but they kind of let me make my own decisions. And if it was going to be a mistake, they would have let me make my mistake. Right. Luckily, so far, knock on wood, it's not. But, you know. Yeah, because it's most because, you know, performing arts, professionally, there's a lot of disappointment. There's a lot of, like, heartache involved with it. And no one no one wants to see their their kid, like go through that and like is old you know no matter how old you get our parents will always look at us as their kids their babes they have to protect so like they're like nervous about that and then you know so that it's completely understandable i know it's like it's sad because some folks you know will look at like you know their their parents who don't um support them and look at people who have parents who do support and be like oh i wish i had that but then there's a complete opposite end of the spectrum that we'll talk about is like your parents do the exact same thing as you. So there's kind of like this, like um, this almost like this pressure, like they kind of like a living coach sort of situation. <laughs> they're almost Absolutely. like, and they're almost like, Oh, well, I, I actually wish my parents didn't do this. So like, but then there's like that middle ground, like just come to my show, support me. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Just support and let me make my own decisions and make my own mistakes and, hopefully if they have the means to help you along and my so lucky you know we didn't grow up wealthy or anything like that but my parents they always they made it work they saw how much I love dancing and they they worked harder so that I could could do it and you know when I moved to New York they helped me as much as they could and I'm so forever grateful to that for that yeah absolutely and uh so now now you're in Moulin Rouge. Um, we want to talk about you, we're gonna we're gonna talk about this a little bit, you know. But it is you were like overlapping, like you were 
you were auditioning for Moulin Rouge, like kind of as you're doing Aladdin, which mm-hmm. is crazy because you know you're you're touring with Aladdin, so you're like doing this audition, and like again, initially you had to say no um, because it was just so like overlapped. I mean, it's it sucks, but it's kind of a good problem to have. Oh, abso- absolutely, <laughs> it's a great problem to have, um, but it, it was heartbreaking because. I love Aladdin. It's like has such a special place in my heart and the choreography and dancing in that show is incredible. Moulin Rouge is like on another level for dancers. Um, Have you seen the show? Yeah. Yeah. The, the dancing is hard. It is down in the floor. It is technical. It's like gritty. You are pushing yourself absolutely to your extremes every night. And like, I want I always wanted to do that as soon as I saw the show I was like that is for me that is absolutely the way I dance it's I'm the the sensuality of the women the autonomy of the women like it just spoke to my heart so much so I knew I just knew I had to do it and the thing about the like Aladdin versus Moulin Rouge in Aladdin the boys get to do most of the like really fun dancing you know they get this great opening um sequence that really shows up like it's a lot of kicks and turns and very athletic um and in Moulin Rouge the women really get to do that athletic dancing you know we have the can-can in the beginning that is truly pushes you to the edge of where you think you can go as a as an athlete and so getting the call and and talking to Disney and realizing that I couldn't do it it was absolutely heartbreaking but you know, everything happens for a reason. I wouldn't, it was for an onstage position, so I wouldn't have gotten to swing. And swinging has been a really incredible journey for me. So mm-hmm. it all worked, it all worked out for the better. Um, and yeah. Well, dang it. Wow. This is, I mean, this is, this sounds like an amazing journey. And the thing is about the journey is it's not, over wait it's, it's not over no no we gotta get you we gotta get you on that broadway stage uh, i know we're, we're we're working on it um you know fortunately both aladdin and moulin rouge are still on broadway so yes hopefully maybe something will work out there in the future that's the great thing about these musicals as they do kind of turn into little families and once you're kind of in the circle you're in the circle and as long as you are a hard worker and you're nice to people, they they try and keep you around. So I'm hoping I'm hoping to stay in these circles for a long time. I love both of the shows very, very much. And you know, I'm still young. I would love to originate a show. I would love to be in an original Broadway cast. That's where it's at, yeah. That yeah, that's absolutely an ultimate goal. So um. we'll see what happens. It it's nice to have a few credits under your name and start to feel a little bit more confident as you walk into these rooms. So I'm, I'm very excited to, you know, really dive back into auditioning now that I'm here a little bit more often. Okay. For the, uh, for the, uh, the young performer who is just moved to LA, just moved to New York and is training, maybe went out for stuff and just keeps saying no and is really discouraged in that or maybe they've like done things that they consider to be small or whatever like and they're not sure if they they're ever going to be able to get to where you're at or even beyond you know like let alone beyond um what are what are some words that you can probably say to them that would like just give them a little bit of a a pat on the back or just a little bit of encouragement to kind of get them to stick it out think just even going back to kind of what we were talking about earlier and like recognizing your smaller goals rather than just focusing on like if you want to dance with a certain artist or you want to be on Broadway in a certain show like those are great goals to have but your career is going to be so long and it's going to be so winding and you're going to have so many ups and downs really think back and recognize the goals that you have like if you're already in LA or you're already in New York that is a huge accomplishment just in itself like it is so hard 
to make that jump and to to be brave enough to just do it and you know even if that's kind of where you're at and you've just moved and you're just starting to take class like that takes so much bravery and that is so commendable just in itself and you know you say maybe you've worked a few small jobs like there's no small jobs like if you go into a room and you go into an audition and you book it the thing is in my experience at least if i whether i'm going in for you know wicked on broadway or hamilton on broadway these shows that are really the pinnacle of what people want or i'm going in for my my first job was on your feet at the gateway playhouse which is a small theater out on long island that i love so much but you know it's not broadway it's pretty much the same people going for these jobs, whether it's Broadway or if it's um, Gateway. Like people need their health weeks, which is you got to work equity jobs to get your health weeks. They want the money. They want to perform. If you're booking jobs, you're booking because you're talented. It doesn't matter if it's a small job or if it's a big job. You booked it. And that is that is an incredible accomplishment all on its own. And you just have to remind yourself that you know you're doing it you're doing the damn thing and that is the hardest that's the hardest step the hardest thing is not booking broadway because that's just a puzzle or booking whatever like booking rihanna booking justin bieber whoever you want to dance for i don't know who's cool to dance for these days but (laughs) um Those are just puzzles. Those are just a numbers game. It's how tall you are, if you're the right ethnicity, if you're the right, you know, size. So moving to LA or New York and just choosing to do it, that's the hardest part. And if you've kind of come over that hump, if you've done that already, the rest is easy. You just, it's just a numbers game. You just have to keep showing up and eventually it's going to work out. It has to. And if it doesn't, write your own musical. Do it. Do it. You heard it here first. You heard it here. (laughs) If you're feeling discouraged and it's not working out for you, then this is your sign to write a musical and do it. Just make your own opportunities. You have to sometimes. Sometimes you do. We are in a place in the world where we don't always have to wait for someone to call action. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. Um. So after all, all the musical theater you have done, do you consider yourself a, a musical theater buff enthusiast now? Do you like study it? Do you? Um, this is gonna sound horrible, but not necessarily. I love it, but like I've been in New York for two weeks and I haven't seen a show. I that's horrible to say, but. I, I don't know. This sounds really bad. I love musical theater. I am not the, the girl who's necessarily like jamming to Anne Juliet or something like that. Uh, love the show. I mean, I haven't seen it, but it looks great. Um, I don't know. I just. It's hard sometimes when it's what you do every day. Sometimes you just want to take a little break and step away. I do love to see shows. I love to support the shows. I love to support my friends. But I wouldn't say I, I'm a dramaturg at all. I, I'm just a dancer who just wants to dance. And musical theater has been that avenue for me. And I'm so thankful to the art form for that. Oh, we love to hear it. Okay, I'm going to ask you a few questions. It's going to be kind of like a, a lightning round. It's kind of to end things off. Let's go. We'll see this this works. And if there isn't one, if there isn't an answer, just say there isn't one, and then we'll just keep going yeah. to the next one. All right. Okay. And okay, what's your vocal range? Mezzo, soprano. We're getting there. We sing what we can. <laughs> okay. So this is dream role. But if there's no dream role, do you have a dream show? My dream show is Miller Rouge. So uh, I'm very, very lucky to be doing that. I think other than that, uh, I would love to play Nini in Moulin Rouge at some point. Uh, she is the like biggest dance feature in the show. Dream, I think, 
I would love to do In the Heights again. I did it once. So that's definitely another dream show. Uh, other than that, original Broadway company of something is the biggest dream. Okie dokie. All right. And favorite role or favorite show you've been in? Rouge, yes. Also, I did On Your Feet, which is the Gloria Stefan musical, which is all salsa. And I did the original Broadway choreography of that. And that was one of my favorite like experiences as a performer because we learned the whole show in two weeks. It was incredible. It was so fun. Oh, wow. We didn't even talk about that. I know. It was like a little salsa boot camp. It was great. Yeah. Do you have a just a favorite show that you've seen that you like to see i love les mis as a dancer i know that's kind of like random but it was my mom's favorite so she would take me to see it all the time and like that overture starts and i'm just like yeah like it's like a rock concert for me i love it (laughs) (laughs) uh okay do you you have a favorite theater song oh no i don't think so Oh, oh, oh. What's the one that Eponine sings from Les Mis? The... That one. I can't think of the name of it right now. But on my own, on my own, on my own, I belt that in, in the shower all the time. <laughs> if you if you had to choose, if you had to choose, if it was open, what would be your go-to audition song? I'm assuming it's probably going to be on my own. <laughs> No, that's a little too overdone, I think. Um, Defying Gravity, no, it's playing this, definitely. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, what's the, the Another Suitcase, Another Hall, I think, from Evita, The Mistress's Song. That I think that song is absolutely beautiful. Love that one. Love that. Have you seen the show Chicago? I have. Yes. Which one of the Merry Murderers do you identify with the most? Pop, Six Squish, uh, uh, Cicero, or Lipschitz? I think pop, you know, it's like it builds up, builds up and you're fine. And then that one thing, just one little gum smack sends you right over the edge. Mm. I love that answer. I lo- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and theater, yeah. Which theater performer, alive or dead, would you ever have a dinner with? Um, but... Cheetah Rivera, absolutely. Yeah. I, you know, oh yeah. As a as a Latin woman, yeah, she's just such a huge inspiration to me. <laughs> and uh if you could bring back a show as a revival, which one would it be? In the Heights, hundred percent. I that love that show so much. I hope, I was hoping. I'm still hoping with all the su- success of Hamilton, we'll we'll revive that one soon. Uh, yeah. That would be a great too. revival. That would be a great yeah. revival. That's an album I jam too. I love that album. So good. So it's so good. good. And last but not least, if somebody wanted to become a fan of Karina Avila, how would they be able to do that? How, how can they find you? Uh, my Instagram, Instagram's really the only platform I'm super uh, active on, but my Instagram is at Karina Ballerina underscore Karina is C-A-R-I-N-A Ballerina. So yeah, give me a follow. I, I love sharing all my experiences from tour and the show and all that. Yeah, that's amazing. Karina, thank you so much for coming in. This was awesome. Thank you so much. I had so much fun. It's great to get to talk about all my experiences and Hopefully inspire some people. We'll see. So, so yeah, yeah. Hopefully, yeah, we can we can bring you back and talk about the next thing that you do. That is absolutely right. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Of course. And this has been Performers Wanted, and we are. Mm-hmm.